Hey everybody, here we are, uh, Handy Andy, Nick, uh, Cal Turtle at Underwater World. We made it to LA, uh, arrived safely, so our first stop of the tour is here at Underwater World. Yeah, these guys are a big saltwater distributor, uh, one of the top ones we use, so excited to go see it. Looking forward to it, stay tuned. So here we go, everybody. We'll get uh, right into it. Here you can see an overview of all their fish systems. Um, as you can see, lots of bicolor angels here. These guys here uh, typically only are in their uh, their hands for a couple days before they end up getting shipped out to places like us here. You can see all kinds of different angels. Uh, they've got a, a, a great mix of different things, as you see, we'll go through. But some Larvanus butterflies here. These guys are beautiful. Uh, there's a melon butterfly. Unfortunately, these guys are a little bit more on the picky side when it comes to eating so we don't see them a ton on our end but they had a great selection of them like I said you can see they're uh, appropriately sized in those little uh, containers there they are only there a couple days but uh, had plenty of room to move around great great flow great oxygen for them yeah this is one of the cleaner setups we saw too um, definitely keep these tanks maintained here a, little, a lot of little dories there that's a semi larvatus butterfly there from the red sea that's one of my favorites yeah that's one of the easier ones to keep isn't it yes yeah then here we have a borbonius antheus these guys are pricey uh definitely one of the more exotic antheus you can find i'm i'm pretty sure they're one of the if not the most expensive antheus i think there's one from japan that's tops them a little bit but see more lemon peel angels there a uh, great selection of uh, the dwarf angels multi bars there uh, but they had all kinds of different angels of different sizes too. That was the cool part, seeing uh, the amount of uh, of just different sizing. Here we have a gold angel, another pricey dwarf angel that you don't see too often. These guys are deep water, so we do not see them. Then here we have some really cool swallowtail angels, males and females. Uh, that's at Wantana Bay behind it, but the front are, there's another Wantana Bay. Yeah, these guys are cool. The, all the Ginocanthus, the gray angels like this are all reef safe. Big school of naso tangs there. That was a cool part seeing uh, the big groups or big schools of uh, similar fish like that in a in a container playing together. Yeah, that was something surprising to me. I was really excited to go on this trip. You know, go see all the crazy wholesalers out in California. Um, the they they did definitely have diversity of fish, but I was expecting a lot more oddballs and a more variety. Um, but they really did focus in on the the key species of the hobby. And you see some African flameback angels. Perfect example there. There's a, a bunch of them, uh, different sizings, but uh, they would just have a, a great quantity of uh, a bunch of the regular type of fish. Yeah, on the wholesale level, that makes, I guess, a lot more sense than I was really hoping to see lots of weird oddballs, and we did see plenty of them. Uh, but each tank, like, you'd see a section of flame angels, and it'd be 100 flame angels. We're like, uh, these are emperors? Uh, Yes. Yeah, Emperor Angels, and it'd be like this here. You get every stage of development. Um, so they get an order from that part of the world for Emperors, and they'd send varying sizes and just huge quantities of them. But that's the cool part. You see the different sizes and the different stages, and there's similar sizes that are different uh, adult and, and juvenile still. Yeah, with that clip, that was all the same species of fish, but just the different stages of its life. Then right. Here's your powder blues, like we said, the quantity of them. Probably had 60 or 80 of them on hand. As you can see, a whole herd of diamond gobies here with a great tight-fitting lid. They like to jump. Next up, we came to their Achilles tank section. As you can see, these are very large Achilles. Absolutely beautiful, that orange orange coloration on these guys. When they get big, they get even better looking. Uh, this is actually a really cool one. He had a cleft fin, so he's like got that crescent crescent fin on the bottom there. He was perfectly uh, healed. Like, there was no uh, anything wrong with him. He was just a beautifully marked, unique fish. Uh, and she said that the, he was there for several weeks. And uh, we went ahead and snagged him up and got him ordered in and actually shipped him out to New York this week. Yeah, he actually just went out yesterday. Um, then here we have some Fathead or Sunburst Antheus. I love these guys. They're just funny looking. Good size, too. They were uh, one of the bigger ones I had seen. Yeah, you usually don't see them too big. Half black angels here. Again, back to that. Lots of diversity. Uh, here's a hybrid angel. It's up top. Hard to see. Uh, but they kept it secluded just so that it didn't get up into the uh, overflow. Yeah, he is absolutely tiny. Little guy. 
here's a little overview of uh, of Underwater World. Kind of, uh, you can see how many individual tanks that they have there. Uh, large facility. They definitely had quite a bit of stuff. Here's some damsels. Yeah, velvet damsels, neon velvets. So again, they keep these guys in those little cups like that to make sure that they don't harm each other uh, while in their care, and they come to us nice and perfect. Yeah, and in the wholesale, it's all about getting the fish in and out into their forever home. Um, so these tanks, at the most, I think they'd be in these about a week. They yeah. really are just turning them over. Yeah, but everyone had a good, uh, good water flow, good supply of oxygen, so it wasn't like they were hurting. Yeah, that's something we haven't talked about is the filtration that we saw on this system. There was a wall of filtration. Here we got a nice looking soap fish that uh, those guys just kind of hang around, but nifty, different looking. Unfortunately, they get a little bigger and mean. Yeah, this is one I was excited to see because it's not one you really ever see in stores. Such a unique fish, but yeah, definitely kind of like a grouper, just a little bit smaller. Kind of a mix between a, a dotty back and a grouper, a little attitude, but got some size and can eat just about anything. Then we come over to the eels. They had lots of different snowflakes more than anything. Yeah, they love those uh, the pipes that they have in there for them. There was probably 40 eels just hanging out all together, all bunched up in there. Different varieties as well, which is pretty cool seeing them hang out together. There's a tessalata. These guys are pretty peaceful when they're small, but as soon as they get a little size to them, they'll eat just about anything and everything that fits in their mouth. Yeah, and Tessalatas, I believe, get about six foot full grown. And they're pretty girthy, too. Some gobies in there. Oh, more butterflies. Pearl scale there. I love pearl scales. Yeah, they're pretty. Clownfish. They had all kinds of captive bread. These are maroon lightning clowns. Uh, but they had a bunch of different varieties of clowns as well. Uh, almost all of them captive bred. Yeah, that's really nice about seeing the lightning maroons as you can see the actual patterns you'd be buying. These are some of the biggest Midas blennies I think I've ever seen in my life, too. Uh, another one of my favorite, that bright gold color with the blue eye. I love how active the Midas are, too, for a blenny. Yeah, they, uh, they're they not shy, that's for sure. But yeah, they had a bunch of those guys in, some mystery wrasses. This is another one that uh, they were telling us they were happy they'd started getting more uh, of size in instead of the little teeny tiny ones that they had seen before. That's something I've always been impressed with Underwater World is they do send you nicely sized fish. There's some of that filtration wall I was talking about earlier. Yeah, and if you notice, there's gray bins under all of the tanks. That's all just water that flows in between these systems. Uh, and as we know in the hobby, water volume is always your friend. Some more wrasses, more... Uh, Melanaris. Melanaris, yeah. Thank you. The Wardley's wrasse. Some dotty backs. Again, these cups came in handy for the, tank, the uh, fish that can be a little bit nippy or aggressive with each other. And yeah, all these... Dotty backs, Pseudochromus. Also helps keep track of how many they have. Uh, and inventory is key in this. A couple little pipefish here. I think those are, yeah, banded pipefish. Yeah, those guys were cute. Some of the fairy. They had a bunch of the fairy and flash harasses. And as you can see there, he was showing off for us. Uh, one of my favorites, personally. Yeah, oh, Swiss Guard basslet. I love those guys. The Leah Propo Leah Propoma basslets. Never seen one in person. That yeah, was cool. That was the first one for me too. Radiant Rasses. These guys only come from Africa, so we do not see them very often. Uh, so they're a, a beautiful one. I love this guy, little flying gunnard. Yeah, he was. Uh, this is the oddballs I was talking about. I love seeing all kinds of personality there. Yeah, the wings, the little legs. Super he was all cool. flared out for us. Next up, we've got some dragonets. Uh, here's some spotted mandarins, and then the red dragonets in the tank over. You can see they had lots of these guys in. We've had better success with the uh, small ones like these guys than some of the larger wild caught ones. They really have a tough time acclimating to captivity. These were kind of their, their goby and blenny line here, as you can see a bunch of the canary and watchmen. Some of the red chorus wrasses. These guys are beautiful, the patterns when they get bigger. Unfortunately, they do eat snails, or tend to. Yeah, dragon rats. Those are also called rock mover rats. As they get bigger, they literally will just grab rocks and move them around your tank. Yeah, they're very conscious about it too. They'll pick up a rock, set it to the side, and kind of look at what was under the rock. Eight line rats. This was the cool part, I guess, for me seeing uh, a lot of the different, uh, as you can see here, foremost rats. A lot of these we don't get in just because they get bigger, a little bit more aggressive. Your fish only tank uh, fish. We, we just don't sell those very often. 
Polani groupers, the pink tail triggers. It was just before. These guys are really nifty. We just don't see them very often here at the store. Diana hogfish, some more angel fish, gold rim. Look how beautiful that is, all flared out. You can tell the difference between the gold rim and the powder blue with that little white on front of their eye. A little lizard blenny there, red spotted lizard blenny. You got uh, some grouper. grouper. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what type he is. Coral grouper, I Coral think. grouper. Some miscellaneous wrasses, as you can see. Some other, uh, that's a fairy flasher wrasse there. Yellow-tailed tamarind wrasse. These guys are just stunning. I mean, they compete with the gym tanks for sure. Yeah. Yeah, they're, uh, I wish they were a little easier to get to eat, but, yeah, he got some uh, splendid dotty backs. Splendid's another mean one. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful, but uh, got a little attitude to them. Big old school of fox faces. It's funny watching all of uh, all of those guys just huddled together. Those guys, the hippo tangs. This is a dog face puffer. This is one of my daughter's favorite fish. You get one every once in a while. It'll roll over and let you pet it on pet it on its belly. Got a lot of personality on those guys. Yeah, they had a good amount of dog faces around. They were the little Dalmatian dog faces, I call them, with the black spots. Some sweet lips here. They had a few different types of. Uh, of the different sweet lips. These are one that's kind of difficult to get doing well in captivity, but once they hit a certain size, they, they do become easy eventually, but the young ones especially are touchy. Some blue spot puffers there. Those guys are a little dwarf. They stay uh, manageable where the dog faces can get literally the size of a football. Yeah, I'm surprised more people aren't keeping the blue spot puffers, just how beautiful they are. Stars and stripes. Yeah, so these little guys here, again, are just like the dog face. Uh, they will they will get the size of a football. We had some melon butterflies. Look at those guys. Those are ornates there, actually. Uh, those are beautiful, but another really difficult one to get to eat. Yeah, you don't see us carry the butterflies too often because a lot of those are really coral-specific feeders. Here's a Gutitis tang, mustard tang, black tang. Those guys are beautiful. Are they? <laughs> They're okay. They're okay. They're yeah. Not a thousand dollars. Beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, they're quite pricey. Yeah. Uh, 800-ish? Oh, yeah, 1,000 is probably more, okay. more accurate. Okay, a little volatile lionfish. Hilarious what? to see them at this size. Yeah, they're little bitty guys. You would, wouldn't would even realize what they are uh, or what they grow into at that size. Yeah, they'll get the size of a football, too, eventually. All the Niger triggers. Yeah, yeah, those guys get beautiful, too. They get the green throats and the long tails. The red teeth. We've got a fully mature one in the store right now that's stunning to see. Every bit of 10 inches, maybe more. I mean, you see the emerald crabs there. They keep those guys separated. Uh, she was telling us more for uh, inventory than anything so that they know how much they have. Some starfish there. These are all cleaner shrimp. Uh, again, they keep them isolated just so that it makes it easier for them to pack and go and, and see uh, what all they have in stock. Yeah, and this is stuff that I'm sure they're mailing out daily, these guys. You can see one molted there. Yeah, we do get that every once in a while. Uh, oh, there's a peacock mantis shrimp, but uh, we'll back to the molt. We get them every once in a while with a molt in the bag on the way to us. I think something about changing water conditions really triggers them to molt. Those guys there, uh, back to the mantis shrimp, those guys are beautiful, but uh, they pack a punch. Uh, Here you can see some of the invert systems. Uh, they had a lot of starfish, urchins, things like that in these Feather tanks. dusters. Yeah, a lot of miscellaneous, as you can see, some chocolate chip stars. Uh, but she was just saying that basically whatever they – need or whatever they get a hold of uh they've got tanks that are available for them to to go into and that about wraps it up you can see they had the the fish room here and then the uh invert room over there then their acclimation section i'm sure these are used just about daily here but yeah that wraps up our tour all right and that does it for our tour of underwater world big thanks to uh wendy for having us out there uh to take us on the tour and uh, stay tuned. We have a whole lot more fun, a uh, whole lot of neatness coming out from our California trip. Yes, LA was very cool. Yeah, we got a couple other wholesalers to look at and uh, some sea just, creatures. Yeah, some random uh, Nick and Andrew adventures. Yes. Stay Thanks tuned, guys. Thanks.